National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham and to the 1995 Gladiator Heats. Now, one of the great things about gladiators, apart from myself, of course, only kidding, only kidding, pretty joke fair, is the fact that it brings together people of all ages and from all walks of life. I mean, this year alone, we have a doctor, a baker, and a fish and chip maker. We do, it's true. But the one thing they have in common, of course, is their eagerness to give the gladiators a good challenge. And I'm sure tonight will be no exception. But let's get on to something which everybody really wants to hear about. The prizes. Prize for winning gladiators. A fabulous holiday for two on the Paradise Island in the Bahamas. <laughs> Plus £5,000 cash each. One more, a fabulous four-wheel drive, off-the-road, family vehicle! <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all, and of course, our runners-up will each walk away with £2,000! <laughs> so let's meet the people who are fighting for those prizes. Tonight they are Janet Allen... ..and Diane Thomas! feeling? Well, I was a bit nervous, but I just thought I'd go for it. So tell us what you do and where you're from. I'm a sports development officer and I come from Bristol. So what does a sports development officer do? Well, so I'm basically going into the community, putting on coaching courses and other sports initiatives. Oh, that's terrific. And you're obviously very fit. What's your, what's your little sport? What do you like doing? I love doing bodybuilding. Oh, really? And I understand you've been very successful. That's right. I went to Italy back in June and I came sixth. That's terrific. Could you give us a little pose? Look at this. Oh! It looks better with the tracksuit off, doesn't it? So tell us, are you looking forward to tonight? Yes, I am. Very much. So. Well, listen, we'll look forward to seeing you. Okay. Off you go. Janet Allen, well done. OK, Diane, you look full of confidence, a lovely smile. Tell us, Diane, what do you do for a living? full-time housewife, but just part-time I work just a couple of evenings as a waitress at the Shibden Mill Inn. OK. And how many children have you got? I've got two children, Lucy who's five and Harry who's three. You've obviously got a full-time job there. Tell us, what made you want to come on Gladiators? Well, I've watched it a couple of times on television and a friend of mine said, you'd be good at that, you know, why don't you give it a crack? So I started going to the gym, started working out and, um, you know, here I am now. I've managed to get through. Are you as fit as you can, you can be? Um, I think there's always a little bit of work that you could, uh, like, try and um, get better on, but, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm as fit as I possibly can be. Good. Now. And I'm sure you'll get through. Off you go, Diane. Get yourself ready. Let's hear it for Diane Thomas. Now it's time to meet the guys. Tonight they are Phil Ennis. And David O'Halloran. Well, I, I, I wanted to be here and I'm here. Well, that's terrific. That's good enough. Tell us what you do and where you're from. Um, I work for Thompson's Directory and I'm from London. Now, I know <laughs> that you're a very busy man when you're not working because I understand this man has 11 children. Um, well, <laughs> can I just put this to rights? Because this is the first time I'll, and the only chance I'll get. When I got to go with my other half, she had six lovely children, I had four, and we've now got one extra called Bradley, so there's 11, but they're all great in there over there. They're all here tonight? Oh, that's <laughs> terrific. So tell us, how do you keep it? What do you do? Um, just chase after them, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I usually just do things that potter about. I'm just like everybody else sitting at home, I would imagine, just um, do this, this and that, nothing particular. I understand you've had some special help from a very special person. Um, yes, I was, ask, I was going to ask my brother to double for me because he's my twin, but he wasn't too hard on it. But. <laughs> but he helped you anyway. Is he here tonight? Yeah, Pat's over there. Oh, Yo. brilliant. Well, you've got plenty of support. Off you go, Phil Ennis. Good luck. <laughs> OK, David. Now, I hope you don't mind me saying it, but you are actually our oldest contender. Can you tell us how old are you? I'm 43 this year. You're 43? Wow. And can you tell us, what do you do for a living? 
Well, I'm a doctor by profession, although for the last 10 years I've been working uh, consulting in cardiology, I'm now working with the Royal College of Psychiatrists in a, a number of related conditions like schizophrenia, anxiety and clinical depression. And what hobbies yeah. do you have, David? Well, other than my work, all I ever do is train, as my family will testify, and the fact that I've got here is a testimony to the training. Oh, so nobody will argue with that. David, off you go, get yourself ready. Let's hear it for David O'Halloran. Well, after all that gossip, the ladies should be ready for their first event. Well, what a great event to start the show. Using the blue balls, it's Diane! And on the red, it's Janet! And they're going to be facing the Nightshade, Amazon and Zodiac! Amazon's first time out on the Powerball floor. Mind you, she's in good company with two very seasoned campaigners. Zodiac fired up, locks onto Janet. Oh, look at that rugby tackle. Here's Janet. Oh, does a gazza past Nightshade. Slips her the dummy and slips in two points. And a big tackle there from Amazon. And one from Zodiac. And you can see now they're beginning to feel the pace of this very exhausting event. Big tackle there by Nightshade on Janet. And not much going on on the scoreboard at the moment. Here comes Diana. Oh, two points. How's she got that in? Have to ask Wayne Dobson. Zodiac floors Janet. Diane's two points won't count. She took the ball from the same end. Time up. Janet two, Diane four. Well done, Diane. Hard work, wasn't it? Well, very hard work. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah, you look like you were enjoying it. Tell me, how many points did I get? You got four points! Well done! <laughs> well, Janet, that was hard. You kept on meeting Nightshade, didn't you? I know, I certainly did. She's a hard hitter, and she got me all the time. Never mind. A long way to go. You got yourself two points! Well done, Janet! So after one event, Janet's on two points, Diane's on four, back to Fash. Now, let's see the men. Using the blue balls, it's David! And using the red, it's Phil! And guarding those five baskets, a raider, a warrior, and there's only one, a Saracen! Gladiator's own rapid reaction force, a fearsome threesome, if ever there was. Over to John Anderson. Contenders, ready! <laughs> Gladiators, ready! Well, who'd want to face up to that? Well, Phil Ennis would. Earlier today, he gave us his thoughts about appearing on the show. It's like the ultimate activity centre. You know, if you want to have a, like they say, come to an activity centre, have a fun holiday, this is it. This is like the ultimate activity centre. No matter what you want to do, it's here. All you've got to do is have the bottle to go on it, and once you're on it, you'll think, yeah, go again. Except they don't actually charge you. They should, but they don't. It's excellent. Well, Phil's happy to be here. Hope he's just Three, as happy after 60 seconds two, of Powerball. One. Let's play ball. Here's Dr David Saracen dishes up the Pedersen. Raider spins Phil out of bounds. It's Saracen on Phil. And he fails to score. Grabs another. Oh, it's in. Two points. And three points for David as John Anderson stops the play at 43 seconds. Saracen, can you tell us what's happened? I've just done as well by doing that. The last tackle I just did there, my elbow hyperextended and I heard it crack, so I don't think I should go over this game. Well, let's hope it's nothing too serious. I hope not too. Lovely. It's here for Saracen! 
In the replay, we can see Saracen reaches to grab Phil, stops him scoring, but pays the price. So, let's welcome our replacement gladiator, Rhino! Well, Phil said they don't charge you. With a Rhino on the pitch, he may change his mind. 43 seconds remaining. Three, two, one! Phil against Raider. Raider wins it. A Raider of the lost cause for Phil there. Phil reloads, ducks, he dives, and Warrior dives. Oh, look at that judo throw there. Phil reloaded and squashed. The Gladiator's doing a great job on the marking there. Oh, Phil picks up two, but loses his shoe. David reloads, faces off Raider, and he slipped past him for another two points. Felt that, but he's a doctor, he'll be all right, he'll cure himself later. Time off, and David, Dr. David, gets five points, and Phil picks up four. Well done, David. Well, that shows that age means nothing out here, does it? Well, I think I'll probably age a year or two in that one. <laughs> it was hard, but they hit fairly. I'm sorry about Saracen. Well, I'm not so sure that was a good replacement for you, was it? Rhino coming on. <laughs> they don't come much bigger than Rhino. No, they don't. You got yourself two points! Well done, David. <laughs> Phil, hard work. Oh, oh, I'm looking for me wages. Difficult. <laughs> oh, you better get used to it. You've got a long way to go. I know. I'm glad you just took my shoe rather than my head. You were very lucky. But you got yourself four points! Well done, Phil. After one event, Phil's on four, Dr. David's on five. It's time for our second event. Standing at the foot of the wall, it's Diane! She's going to be chased by lightning! Also rearing to go, it's Janet! She's going to be chased by Jet! Over to John Anderson. Contenders, you will go on my first whistle. Gladiators, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Janet in pink, Diane in yellow. 60 seconds to scale the wall. First to the top, 10 points. Second scores five, unless the Gladiators get to them first, and here they come. It's lightning on Diane and Jet on Janet. And lightning is thundering away up that wall. Snapping at Diane's heels already. Janet climbing strongly. Jet struggling to get close. Lightning's got Diane! And Janet's up and over for ten. Jet screaming at lightning to get a better grip. Oh, she's lost it! Lightning comes away with a shoe. The rest of Diane is up and over for the five. And doesn't husband Jack love it? Well done, Janet. That was a close one, eh? She was hot on your heels. Yeah, she was definitely hot on my heels, but I knew I had to get up there. Just kept on going, and I made it. Well, you deserve it. You've got yourself your ten points. <laughs> Diane. Wow. I don't know how you managed to slip away. I thought she got your leg there. That was good, wasn't it? <laughs> Sneak a little trick of mine. I shook her off, and my shoe just flew off. So. Yes, I just kept going. Brilliant. Well done. Let's hear it for Diane! After two events, Janet's on 12, Diane 9. It's time for the men. So now we move into the men's wall and contemplating the climb. It's Dave! <laughs> He's going to be chased by Cobra! <laughs> also ready for the wall, it's Phil! Earlier today, David took time out to tell us who was responsible for his appearing as a contender tonight. Well, Gladiators is such a brilliant programme, but uh, the real spur for this was my children. Uh, they are Gladiators addicts. Uh, James is 10, Sarah's 8. Uh, we've been watching the, the programme now for the last three years, and it's always one of those uh, fab things that you say, can you do that? Of course I can do that. And uh, I'd like to say that either my children or my wife was responsible for sending off the application form, but I confess it was me, because I've got the book too. I'm a Gladiators fan, even at 42. So his secret is out. Three, two, one! And 
so is John Anderson's whistle. David in blue, Phil in red. Above them, over 32 feet of rock face, and behind them, over 32 stone of gladiators. Hunter's on Phil, and Cobra's on David. And look at Hunter go! He's in no mood to mess about! Come here, Phil! Ah, oh, that foot, you can come with it. Blistering performance again from Hunter. Cobra's hanging on to a foot. Can David hang on for five? Cobra slithering up for a better grip. David stuck there like a limpet. Cobra trying everything he knows. Tremendous display of strength from David. Cobra two-handed on the harness, still can't shift him. Rises his hand off the wall, but he still won't give in. Holding on by a fingernail. He must have glue on his hands. Time is running out. Cobra running out of ideas. One last chance, Cobra. Oh, he's got him. Well, full marks to David, but no points. Oh, Phil, oh. you did well for about two seconds. Oh, I wish I should have been a fly. This guy is fast. He certainly is. What do you think? Well, he gave me a bit of competition. You know, I got over the hole hang by the time I set off and uh, I had a good run, so, you know, he was mine. Oh, well done. And Cobra, congratulations, but blimey, you were stubborn up there, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I was really worried about getting Cobra because I know how good he is on the wall. I thought, well, I'll just uh, do my impression of a clamp on. He's the strongest guy I've ever had to try and pull off that wall. He would not let go. Well done, let's hear it for our contenders and for our gladiators. Well done all round. Not so much a tussle with the muscle as a brawl on the wall. After two events, scores remain the same. Well, didn't our male gladiators do well? Still, there's plenty more events to come, so join us after the break here on Gladiators! Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham and to part two where we're just about to kick off with one of this season's cracking new games. It has a touch of hide and seek about it, only our gladiators like to play it around a huge ball suspended 40 feet off the arena floor, and it's called Pendulum. <laughs> and first up, it's Janet. <laughs> and tonight she's facing Zodiac. series and probably the most spectacular of all the gladiator events. Gladiator has to catch the contender within 60 seconds. There's five points for evading capture and hanging on for 40 seconds, and 10 points if the contender lasts the four minutes. But when you're facing Zodiac, there's nowhere to hide. Zodiac will be trying to grab that flag on Janet's back like a couple of space women hanging on to a meteor. Oh, and gravity's got her. She's down. Disappointment for the fans there. But Zodiac, a formidable opponent on this event. Just lost the grip. It's good. You could see Zodiac coming after you, could you? That's right, yeah, I could see her coming. But that made you nervous? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Never mind. A few more events. Oh, thank you, missus. Up on Pendulum, it's Diane. And she's facing Nightshade. Over to John Anderson. Set the Pendulum. Shade against Diane, poles apart at the moment, but as soon as the pendulum swings, they both have to move from their start positions. And Diane has no idea from which side Nightshade will mount her attack until she sees it coming over the horizon. And remember, these girls are 40 feet up. Here comes Nightshade sneaking up the blind side, going for the pennant. Oh, she's lost it. Good night, Nightshade. Ten points and jubilation for Diane.
Shane, I know you won't be happy with that. I, you were actually slightly out of sight. Can you talk us through what happened? Well, I came around the pendulum as fast as I possibly could, and uh, I actually saw her, and I reached for her, and I missed the little tag and um, fell off the pendulum. Oh, what a shame. But not such a shame. For Diane, you picked up 10 points. Wonderful. I think I'm the happiest woman in the entire world. Well done. Let's hear it for Diane and for my team. Another happy lady. After three events, Janet 12, Diane 19. So now we move into the men's pendulum with Phil. And he's facing Hunter. Over to John Anderson. Set the pendulum. made short work of Phil on the wall. How will he do on the ball? Phil moving well, but Hunter has the scent of his prey, which is kind of handy on this thing, because you can't see a thing till you get round there. There's Phil's boy urging him on. And Phil's lost his footing. He's hanging on for dear life, and Hunter's moving in for the kill. But it's a good recovery by Phil. And Hunter's still on the case, though. Phil edging his way round, trying to keep out of Hunter's reach. If he can hang on for the full 40 seconds, he's got those five points in the bank. Easier said than done when you've got Hunter on your tail. So far, so good. Oh, he's gone! Disaster for Phil, and look at the disappointment in his children's faces. Phil? You are fast. Ticking day. Brilliant. The bad news is you fell off. Oh, well, I think most people would with Hunter behind you. The good news is you're on there for more than 40 seconds. You yeah. pick up five points. Yeah. Excellent. Slightly pleased with that, then. Brilliant. He was fast, Hunter, and you were almost faster at one stage. He certainly was. I didn't have a clue where he was, but I think he must have some super glue on his hands because Danny was hard to hold on there. Certainly was. That's how we like to see Pendulum being played. Phil and Hunter, well done. In the replay, you can see it's not only the pressure from Hunter, but the swing of the pendulum that was the undoing of Phil. Next up, it's Dave O. And he's going to be facing Trojan. Over to John Anderson. Set the pendulum. Dave on the right of the pendulum and moving to his right. Oh, no, he's not. He's coming back. And there's the reason why it's Trojan. This ball, five metres in diameter, it's guesswork which way to go. And he guessed wrong. And there comes Trojan like a marauding barbarian, snapping after him. And Trojan moves in for the kill. And he's got his flag of surrender. That must have been heart-stopping, even for a qualified cardiac physician like David. Trojan relentlessly stalking him, snatches the prize. Well, I know they like to call you Dave-O, but I'd like to say, oh, Dave. <laughs> yes, I would too. <laughs> Bit disappointing. Yes, I think I chose uh, the wrong option. I went uh, up and right. Down and left sounds a little bit better. But it's a great game, it really is. You did enjoy it. I did, thank you very much. More so than Powerball. Oh, much more so. <laughs> and Trojan, all credit to you, you did a terrific job. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you very much. It's good. It's a great game. I know everybody up here enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it at home as well. Good chase, man. It certainly was. Let's hear it for Dave and for Trojan. After three events, Phil extends to nine. David stays on five. And first up to run the gauntlet is Janet. And she's going to be facing her jet. And Falcon. Over to John Anderson. 
Janet, ideally built for this event. Small, powerful, and just over nine stone. And here goes Freddy! Three, two, one! 30 seconds to walk on the wild side. Five points for a successful run, 10 points if completed in under 20, and Janet puts Jet and the Falcon to flight. Slams away from Panther. Lightning is dishing it out. Double fisted with those power pads. That stalled her. Amazon takes over, like a dam with that ramrod. Janet's got out of her depth, hustles and bustles away to the finish. <laughs> she powers her way over the line, what a great gauntlet. Well, okay. let's find out what your time was. 22 seconds. 22 seconds, get yourself five points. <laughs> Janet, that was hard going, wasn't it? That was very, very hard. They're really tough girls. Did you think you were going to get up again when Amazon was almost standing on you, is it? Yeah, I just had that determination that I had to get through it. Well, the good thing was you got to the other end in one piece. Five points! Well done, Janet! <laughs> and next to run the gauntlet, here's a diet! Oh, what a John Anderson. Looking at Diane's stats, she's three pounds heavier than Janet. Let's hope she's as determined. Gladiators, ready! Three, two, one! Diane begins her sprint down Hell's Highway. Jet pins her with the ramrod. And Falcon carries her with those power pads. Better performance from her, this one. Oh, smack into a cat's eye view of the action from Panther's helmet cam. Goes low, Lightning piles in. Good work by Lightning, pushing her wide. Diane trying to back her way out of trouble. Alison getting rough, and there's no plain sailing when the Amazon's involved. Put a ramrod in her hand, she knows how to use it. Oh, a good hard run from Whoa. Diane. Well done, Diane. You got there in the end. You don't look too happy with yourself. No, I expected to get through there a bit quicker. But I was just in the wrong place. I should have gone more to the side. But not to worry, I have done it. It's a lot of gladiators to me, isn't it? Let's just bring in Andy, have a look at the time. 29 seconds. 29 seconds, gets you five points! Well done! We need those. Let's it for Diane! As Diane celebrates, let's check out the scores after four events. Janet's on 17, Diane 24. So, let's meet the first of our male contenders. It is a foul! And he's going to be running the gauntlet against a rhino! <laughs> Trojan! <laughs> Raider! <laughs> the Wolfman! <laughs> and the mighty warrior! Just you behave. Oh, what a John Anderson! Phil, a Londoner, born on the 14th of February. Will these stats be enough to avert a St. Valentine's Day massacre? Stay tuned. And Phil takes a run at it. Oh! And nearly takes a flyer. Well, here's a turn up for the book. A man charging a rhino. He's going for it again. And again. And again. Well, one down, only four to go. Trojan working in with the power pads. Next, it's the Raider. Oh, I can feel that from up here. Raider more of a Ram Raider than a Gladiator. Oh, Phil straight into the Wolf. A Wolf there pinning him with the power pads. Oh, gets a slap from referee. And the reason why is that Phil's time is up and Warrior's Stop. still giving him some afters. Stop. Stop, Warrior. Time up. Oh, this is rough Phil. stuff. Firstly, are you all right? I'm fine. Still in one piece? Yeah, that's a game for me. Sorry, Phil. Out of time. No points. Well, that's not helped his mood in the replay. The whistle goes, but there's a fair drop of afters. First from Wolf, and then from Warrior. No bit of query here, Tom. Is everything all right? Yes, I'm perfectly happy. I don't think the Warrior heard my command, and he was holding him down when the game had finished. And it was simply, I think, he didn't hear the command. He would always obey any command from me. That's right. Warrior? Warrior? Phil was obviously upset. Yeah, yeah. 
He wasn't happy at all. No, no, we get very wound up with this game, and you know, our thing for this year is that nobody gets through this goal. And it's very hard with the, the crowd and everything uh, cheering and chanting to hear my good friend here, John Anderson, the main referee, who I would never, never do anything wrong against. You know that. I love you, John. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's hear from Warrior and John Scotty Anderson. Yeah, this is getting more like home and away than gladiators. And next up to face the mean machine, it's a David! Dr. David from Reading. Oh, what a John Anderson. An inch taller than Phil and half a stone heavier, but is it enough in the valley of death? Three, two, one! And he's up against Rhino, who really is formidable in this event. Not many people get past the first post with Rhino there. David B knocked from Phil at the post. He sees a gap through Rhino's legs. Trojans next. Slams David against the wall, tries through the legs again, and gets slammed against the wall again. With David getting a real roughing up from Trojan. No respect for the medical profession here. Oh, he sidestepped him, and he's through, but only as far as Ram Raider. Time's running down, and so's David. Well, his wife Jane enjoyed it. Well, David, out of time, no points. How do you feel? Oh, that's got to be the, uh, the hardest of all the events here, and I can feel that one. Can you see any of the contenders getting through it? No, <laughs> it's, uh, it's really hard there. Just under 100 stone of beefcake. It's hard to get through. Well, you're still in one piece. Thanks. Let's hear it for David! After four events, Phil's on nine, David's on five. Time for our next event. made her debut last week. First time out on Hang Tough. Striker pose, there's nothing to it except a one-inch height and a three-pound weight advantage over Janet. Over to John Anderson. Contender, ready! And they go, ready! Three, two, Well, Vogue would have been getting training tips and advice for this event from our expert colleagues Jet and Lightning, but even without the tips as ex-European aerobics champion, I think she will do well anyway. Certainly looks very comfortable up there. Nothing vague about Vogue. And Janet looks in desperate trouble. One-armed, one-ringed and nowhere to run. And it's a simple formality as Vogue closes in with the scissors. Cuts her down to size. Vogue claims her first contender skull. In the replay, it's almost as if Janet's waiting for Vogue to finish it to avoid the indignity of disqualification. One of our new gladiators. Yeah, it's really good for me. It's the first time I've been up there, so uh, I'm just tough for these girls because they have done quite a bit today already. So obviously their arms are tired and they're getting to the end of the show. So uh, I think she did really well, but obviously. You're a bit better. A bit better. Just a bit. Let's hear it for Vogue. Well done. <laughs> Next up in Hang Tough, it's Diane. <laughs> and she's going to be facing Falcon. Not a good draw for Diane. Falcon is good in the air, plenty of support from the crowd, and according to her stats, three inches taller than Diane and over a stone heavier. Here's what Diane had to say about appearing on tonight's show. I'm looking forward to the challenge. I think I do prefer the chasing games as opposed to the contact ones, because you don't get quite as good. What a sensible girl. Three, two, one! The Falcon takes flight. A bird of prey looking to swoop in and finish this very quickly. And looking quite at home up there. It should be said, Diane looking very comfortable as well, moving very well. Very well indeed. That red ring means she's in the scoring zone. The Falcon's got her back to her. And she's corrected herself, swoops in, oh, that was close. Somehow, Diane kept away from her. Falcon again. And again, that's three times she's kept the Falcon away. She needs to grab... Oh, look at this! 
She needs to grab a ring. Oh, now she's putting some distance between them. If she gets to the other side, this will be the first time in four series that a girl has made it to the other side. She's done it! She's made it. Gladiator history. Picking up ten points. Celebration time. In the replay, we can see Falcon had one last chance to nail her. When that failed, the points were in the bank and she was in the history books. Easy peasy. And secondly, I think that brings your total to 34, which is exactly twice the points that Janet has as we move into the Eliminator. Fantastic. I enjoyed it in practice, and uh, I didn't quite get the hang of traversing, but I just gave her the slip. But I'd just like to say I'm a bit of a monkey in my spare time, so I found that quite easy. Cheeky monkey, maybe. Well done to Diane! After five events, Janet's on 17, Diane 34. Yes, old Snake Hips himself, the clown prince of gladiators. This is his fourth season of competition, and the stats show he's just an inch taller than his opponent, but 26 pounds heavier. Three, two, one. Swing time for Cobra. The rings are 10 feet off the ground, four feet apart, and the playing area 50 by 25. So there's plenty of room to get by him. And Phil not making any progress at all at this stage. Cobra one ring. And in a fair bit of trouble, it has to be said. And Phil one ring as well. What is he going to do? Oh, he's made a recovery. Phil's in the scoring zone. If he can hang tough there for another 25 seconds, he'll pick up a valuable five points. Cobra traversing. He's seen the danger. And Phil is just happy to hang tough and pray for the whistle. It's all down to Cobra now. And Cobra one ring, but he grabs a piece of Phil. Can he get a grip? In comes the body scissors. Can Phil tough it out? Desperately holding on. He's done it. Five points, right on the whistle. It was quite a slow game of Hang Tough, and in fact, you lost momentum after the third ring, but the most important thing was that when John Anderson blew the whistle, you were in the scoring zone and you picked up five points. <laughs> so next up in Hang Tough, it's Dave O. Facing the nasty, nasty, nasty Wolfman. That's quite a lot of nasties. Wolfie has been on his best behaviour so far this season. The question is, how long can it last? And looking at his stats, he's the same height as David, but 30 pounds heavier. Over to John Anderson. Three, two, one. Sweet time for the wolf. He hunts alone. Nothing to do with his personal hygiene, he just doesn't need a pack. Now, can David outfox him? David looks like he's got a plan here. And he's already in the scoring zone. But the wolf strikes out! He's got him! And David's got a lot of hanging tough to do now. It's a big task to hang on for 35 seconds with a wolf around your neck. Wolf's gone for the fingers, the dog's got the chop! It's another medical cutback! What can I say? I expect you were pleased having this event after Gauntlet and Powerball. Uh, yes, I couldn't wait, really. I thought if there was something that revolved, uh, required stitching, I could uh, probably win that. But uh, not keen on this one? Uh, no, but the, the Eliminator coming up now, maybe I've got a chance there. Well, we certainly hope so. We'll be pitching for you. And um, <laughs> quite easy game for you today. Hey, I'd like to say that this man is 42 years old, He's so fit and so strong, he'd be all the young contenders to make it here. In fact, he's one year younger than me. Oh. <laughs> well, I've got one thing to say, respect. They say the old ones are the best, and let's face it, they don't get much older than Wolfie. After five events, Phil's on 14, David's on five.
seen some action tonight. If you want to see some more, join us after the break here on Gladiators. <laughs> Janet's on 17 points, Diane has raced ahead on 34. That's a 17 point difference, which will give Diane an eight and a half second head start in the eliminator. Diane Thomas from Halifax, 31 year old mother of two, and Janet Allen from Bristol, 29, a community sports development officer. Diane, you will go on my first whistle. Janet, you will go on my second whistle. Three. Two, one. For a place in the quarterfinals, Diane on the high and low hurdles. She does gymnastic displays, triathlons, half marathons, but she won't find anything as tough as this. The Eliminator. Janet's off with eight seconds to claw back. And Diane making heavy weather off the rope climb. What is she up to? Janet is eating into that lead. She's pulled back at least half the deficit. Diane across the rolling beams, and let's hope, for her sake, she makes a better job of this cargo net than she did the rope climb. Janet's on her case. Diane, first to the top. And now it looks like Janet's making a bit of a meal out of this cargo net. Good landing from Diane. foot to the bottom. Diane nearly completes the balance beam safely. Now she digs deep. Up the travelator for a place in the corner final. Oh my goodness, we've seen it happen so many times before. And look at this from behind. Janet's grab it. She's missed it as well. I can't believe this. She must be. Oh, Diane for the second time. And now it gets tough. Once you've missed it once, it's difficult to dig deep enough. Oh, look at that, Diane misses again. Janet scraped in by her fingertips. She's got the rope. She's smiling. She made up an eight and a half second deficit. She's a superwoman and she's all in the quarterfinals. They're all supporting you. You're going to finish this in a place of glory now. Come on. Head up. Run for prey. Come on, let's go. Head up. Let's go. Big straight. As John go, says, go, go, go. it's essential to hold your head up for a balanced point of view, and she does. She does, she makes it to the top. Diane Thomas does it for the crowd, and most of all, does it for her own well, pride. Danny Allen, I would never have believed it. Oh my goodness, that was one of the most exciting, well, certainly the most exciting eliminator we've seen this season. Oh God, it was brilliant. It was so good, I was so determined to catch up with her. So determined. Well, you looked so fast, so determined the whole way, and then it was the travelator, of course. Yeah, that's right, it's given us some problems. I caught it at the first time, but I made sure I got at the second. And the great news is, you're through to the quarterfinals. <laughs> oh, well, well, Janet Allen. Allen. My goodness me, you are so unlucky. What can I say? Eight and a half seconds, I know the thing that... You know, it's easy, no problem, cat in the bag. But uh, you just got to come up here and give it a go yourself. Because it's uh, a lot harder than what it looks. But that's the way it goes. Well, Diane, don't feel too disappointed because you've had a great show. You've broken one record on Hang Tough. Unfortunately, just at the end, it wasn't your day, but you have been told you trick on it, uh, that eliminator to keep your head up. Yeah, that's right, but not so sure. I've, I've, I've really enjoyed myself anyway. Well, no mind is here for Diane! So, it's the men's eliminator, and Phil's hard work has earned him a four and a half second head start. Dave, you've been a great sport throughout this evening, but now it's crunch time. It certainly is, but uh, Phil's been a great athlete all week. Uh, he deserves his four and a half seconds, but as we've just seen with the ladies, anything can happen, so let's hope it does. How do you feel about that? It isn't over till it's over. You're absolutely right, and I'll see you all both at the end. Best of luck to the two of you.
Phil, you will go on my first whistle. Dave, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. So Phil Ennis is doing this one for the family. All 11 of them. Here comes Dr. David with four and a half seconds to catch up. And there's the family right behind him. Phil makes short work of the rope climb. And so does the doctor. And look at Phil's face. You can see what a hard task this handbike is. It's across the rolling beams and onto the cargo nets. And the doctor made a bit of a meal of that. Across the rolling beam. Oh! The flying doctor. A safe landing, though. Phil Ennis, first to the top. His hobbies include the yo-yo. He will feel like a yo-yo himself after completing this ruling eliminator course. Well, the doctor gets to the top and he'll be flying again as Phil takes to the balance beams. Carefully guided by the family. And now, the travelator. He pumps up to the top there. He's gonna do it. Oh, I can't believe it. He's, oh, he's let go! He's let go! And here comes the Doctor! And the Doctor's never begun a more testing round than he's left! And again! But this time, Phil scrambles over. Phil Ennis grabs the rope for a place in the quarterfinals and won't his 11 kids be proud of him. He gave it everything. Dr. David, a schoolboy footballer with Tottenham until he broke both legs in a car accident. And just look at those legs working now! Dr. David O'Halloran conquers the Eliminator. Phil, you look in pain. Oh, oh my legs. That thing is agony. Oh. Well, well, I have to tell you, you've got to come back and do it all again. Oh, yes! Oh, I love him. We look forward to seeing you in the quarterfinals. Well done, Phil Ennis! I'm lucky, David. That travel agent, that does everybody, doesn't it? Yes, I think you... Uh, it's hard to realise how tired your legs are when you get there. And mine were very tired. It really is a tiring event, isn't it? It most certainly is, but I wouldn't have uh, swapped this week for any other sporting venture I've had. I really want to thank all my family and friends who have come to support me. They've been great, thank you. You've really enjoyed it, haven't you? I have, yes. Well done. Let's hear it for David! Everyone's a winner on Gladiators. They all faced the ultimate challenge and came through with flying colours and now they celebrate with their families. Well, after those two nail-biting eliminators, I think I'm ready for a lie down. Me too. <laughs> Well, don't forget to join us, of course, next week for more gladiatorial action here on The Gladiator. A woman! For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. Three, two, one. There is nobody as good at adding tension and fear to a countdown than the one and only John Anderson. He is back with his black and white striped shirt, which has been crisply ironed, I imagine. More Gladiators next on Challenge, over on Pick, a new 60-minute makeover. Oh.